Good morning, all my wonderful people. Today is Wednesday, November 9th, 2022. Okay to videotape, my good people? Mm -hmm. Don't give up, don't give in, don't give out. Life will get better and better and better. It's wonderful to have each and every one of you here with us. Uh, on page 669, it talks about administration of the bankruptcy estate. And it says the administration of the bankruptcy estate um, uh, varies according to the type of bankruptcy declared, right? This section of the chapter focuses on the process for liquidation or chapter seven bankruptcy. And you look at the figure there, it provides a, a flow chart there. Would someone read for me the order of relief? 32-3A, please. Order of relief, please. Nice and loud. What is the order of relief? The order of relief is granted by the bankruptcy court and is the procedural step required for the case to proceed in the bankruptcy court. An order of relief is entered automatically in a voluntary case and an involuntary case when those filings, when the filing, when those filing the petition have established that the deb the debtor is unable to pay for his or her. Chapter 11 cases that involve an individual bankruptcy courts must apply that must apply the means test to determine whether the individual is eligible for declaring bankruptcy or whether there has been an abuse of the bankruptcy court system. Thank you. Uh, what's this list of creditors? It is a debtor's responsibility to furnish the bankruptcy court with the a list of creditors. Why? Why? On page. Uh, uh, 670. Why? Although imposed responsibility for disclosing debts on the debtor may not seem to be effective, uh, the debtor has an incentive for full disclosure? What are you talking about? Those debts not disclosed by the debtor will not be discharged in bankruptcy? What's that mean, wonderful people? If the debtor doesn't do what? If they don't disclose what the debts are, guess what, what happens in bankruptcy? They don't what? Get discharged. They don't get discharged. Now, what is this bankruptcy's estate? The bankruptcy's estate? The bankrupt's estate? What is this? So read that for me, please. All the debtor's property. With certain expectations. Discussed Exceptions, later. discussed later, uh, is included in what? Is included in the bankrupt's, in the bankrupt's estate. Oh, okay. Any property the debtor has the right to Thank you. What's this preferential transfers? So read that for me, please. 32-3E. What's that all about? And thank you for reading that, sir. In many cases, what happens? When a debtor knows that insolvency is a problem and bankruptcy is Im imminent, the debtor attempts to what? Hang on to a property or reputation. Reputation by making transfers of assets to friends or relatives and curry favor with creditors for their post bankruptcy bars. Hold it! You're so, thank you for reading that. You mean they, they give it to their friends? Huh? Mm -hmm. Or relatives? Why? To keep it what? Safe. Yeah. What's the, what's the example uh, about Bernie Madoff and Madoff and a whole lot of stuff? Someone read it for me, please, nice and loud. The trustee in Bernie Madoff case sought to set aside several transfers made to companies and individuals just prior to the time Mr. Madoff admitted that he had an involvement fifty billion in uh, dollar Ponzi scheme. The trustee uses used several of the voidable preferences theories to get these funds returned to the Madoff bankruptcy estate. 
There are specific rules and requirements that determine when trustees can bring back property from third parties into the, into the estate. Those rules are complex and are covered in the following section. Thank you. Now here's my question. Who, um, who is the uh, person who decides on the trustees? And I'm dealing with, with right now, I don't have my, my glasses. I must have left them at, at, at home. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to uh, do a number of things here. Uh, but who elects the trustees in bankruptcy? Thanks, thanks for reading that, sir. Who elects them? The trustee in bankruptcy is elected by all oh, the creditors. The court or the United States trustee will appoint and what? Interim trustee of the creditors do not elect the trustee. Trustees what? Trustee automatically becomes the owner of all the debtor's property, excess of the property to which the debtor's entitled under exemption laws. Trustee holds all of the rights formerly owned by the debtor. And what did Madoff do here? He what? He had that $50 billion Ponzi scheme, right? And the trustee used several avoidable preferences theories to get both these funds returned to Madoff's bankruptcy estate, right? Um, the requirement of debtor insolvency. What is that? Debtor insolvency? What's that? Someone read it for you, please. CPA examination. The requirement of debtor insolvency. What is that? The right of a trustee to bring property back into the bankruptcy estate from third parties under any types of transfers and conditions on the debtor's insolvency. No transfer policy comes back into the bankruptcy estate unless the debtor's transfer is done while the debtor enjoys insolvency. In the declaration section of the bankruptcy laws, insolvency is defined as the inability to pay debt as they become due. Under the section, under this section on um, preferential transfers in the bankruptcy laws, insolvency is defined as the total fair value of all the doctors by the debtor's assets being less than the debt owned by the debtor. The preferential transfer test of insolvency is commonly called the balance sheet test. Mm. It is merely a comparison of assets to liabilities without considering whether the debtor will be able to meet future obligations as they become due. The debtor is presumed to be insolvent in the 90 days prior to declaration of bankruptcy. The debtor will need to prove solvency in order to prevent the trustee from taking the property back into the estate. For the time frames longer than that under avoidable preferences, such as two years for fraud or insiders, the trustee must prove balance sheet insolvency. Thank you. What is insolvency? What is that? You, you saw it here, it was right for us. What is it? What does it mean to be insolvent? as I stand up and walk around a little bit. What's it mean? Hmm? And thank you again, sir, for reading that. What's it mean? It's when what? The debtor what? Is unable to pay their They debt can't debt pay debt. their debts. Now, what are some reasons why a debtor might not be able to pay their debts? Lack of income. Lack of income, right? Maybe they, uh, what happened over at Twitter? Twitter? Some people no lost, what happened? Okay, maybe that happened, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, um, you know, maybe the student loans, wasn't there a student loan, um, a forbearance or something like that for a little while? Did the president do that? Something happened, because of COVID? Did they, something happen with President Biden? Oh, the first COVID came in? was still behind them. It was, not, not the student loan could give us one, but where they, they simply did a forbearance. I don't know if it's still going on or not, to be honest with you. But the point is that, hey, maybe, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's over, and now the person can't afford that either. But we know that student loans, you have to do what? With respect to bankruptcy. They will not be what in bankruptcy? They will not be, um, they They're not going to be discharged, right? You have to pay back those student loans, okay? So they're not part of uh, uh, something you can get out of bankruptcy. Uh, you have to pay them. What's this fraudulent preferential transfer? Sometimes debtors transfer property for the purpose of hiding it from the trustee of the bankruptcy uh, they are planning to declare. This type of transfer is done with the intent to conceal? For example, some debtors create new business entities and transfer property into corporations they newly create as a way to save the post-bankruptcy life. 
those transfers uh, can be set aside. What do you mean, set aside? Known as what? Fraudulent transfers? These attempts by the debtor made within two what? The years of bankruptcy period, presumption of being bought into the bankruptcy of date once the trustee's established bond. Yes, why is there a presumption, thank you, that, that this is a fraudulent transference? Because why are you going bankrupt and you have money? Yeah, and you're putting that money into a new business, right? Okay. Uh, what do they say? Just proving a solvency in these situations is one way of establishing fraud and intent. There are also remedies under state law for such fraudulent transactions that carry longer statutes of limitation for recovery, and trustees can bring suit under those laws as well. Now, there's something called unfair preferential transfers. What's that mean? Someone read it for me, please, if you want, choose to. In these types of transfers, so the debtor is not attempting to conceal the transaction, they are attempting to make gifts to others so that those of friends and relatives can benefit from the uh, better financial misfortunes. For example, a couple, a couple about to declare bankruptcy transferred their motor home to their neighbor's son as a gift. While there's no fraud, they were insolvent at the time and there was no value given. That type of transfer can be set aside by the trustee. The transfer will be fraudulent if the neighbor's son agreed to return the motor home to them once the bankruptcy was completed. Oh, thank you. So in that case, thank you for reading that. What are they saying? This example. Why is it in the textbook? Because it gives an example of when you can give it to somebody, but it can become fraudulent if they give it back. Yeah, notice that. So they can they can go ahead and give it, but if they get it, if the person gives it back to them, then that's fraudulent, right? All right, that's fraudulent. Preferential transfers to insiders. What's that mean? Insiders? So read that paragraph for me, an example, please, please. Another form of vulnerable preference occurs when a creditor transfers property to an insider in the two years before filing for bankruptcy. Mm. For example, on February 14, 2020, Pelagate had only paid off a loan that one of his officers made to the company. On January 23, 2021, the amount the officer received from Elegant will come back into the bankruptcy estate and the officer will take his position with other creditors. These types of inside transfers are not fraudulent transfers because those running the corporation believe that they can keep the company going if they retain management. Corporations make these transfers to keep their executives on board. However, if the company was insolvent at the time of the transfer, the executive must still return the property to the trustee. Thank you. So it makes a difference uh, what's happening, right, with the corporation there. Thank you for reading that. Preferential transfers, voidable preferences. Trustees also have the authority to set aside or void transfers of property by the debtor to a creditor when that transfer gives the creditor more property or funds than they would uh, receive under statutory distribution. If the creditor had his normal pl place in line, referred to as voidable preferences, these leap uh, frog attempts to change bankruptcy priorities of creditors are set aside by the trustee. What's going on there? What's the analysis of that paragraph? What's the debtor trying to do? Are they playing favorites? Yeah. They're trying to give one creditor what? More than what? Yeah. yeah, more than what they're old? Why? More property or funds than they would receive under statutory distribution if the creditor had his or her normal place of line. What's that mean, normal place of line? Oh, is that what we're talking about? Perfected, unperfected, secured, unsecured, right? What are all those rules? Okay, the other chapter? Hmm? So here, the person saying, look, I'll give you everything, right? Trustee comes in and says, no, you can't do that, right? Why would the debtor do that? Maybe they have a deal, maybe uh, uh, friendship, who knows, right? Timing for voidable preferences. Any transfer within 90 days of declaring bankruptcy to a creditor 
for an antecedent debt while the debtor is insolvent is a what? Voidable what? Preference. As noted earlier, there is a presumption of insolvency for the 90 days preceding bankruptcy, and that same 90 days is a measure for trustees to use in calling back what? Payments and property to the debtor's bankruptcy estate. If, for example, if a debtor owes a vendor $3,000, is that $3,000? Can't see my glasses. Yeah. $3,000 uh, that is overdue pays that vendor $1,500 on March 1 and then declares bankruptcy on April 15th. What can the trustee do? Oh, yeah, tell them to pay that $1,500, right, to the bankruptcy estate. Now, preferential security interests? We have that too? Oh, we talked about that already, right, in some of our chapters before? In some situations, the debtor does not make payments to creditors, but instead offers them what? A security interest. Go back and see what chapter, what, 31, or collateral in order to make the creditor a secure, uh, 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 secured, what is that? Make the creditor a secured instead of a general creditor. Such transaction puts those creditors at a higher priority than they otherwise would have had in the bankruptcy and the security interest and pledge of collateral uh, is voidable by the trustee. The preferential secured creditor would just be general creditor for purposes of what? Distribution. So read me please, contemporaneous charitable an ordinary course of business transfers, please. On page 673, nice and loud. Nice and loud, 673, nice and loud, please. And the examples, please. The 90 day callback does not apply to better payments for items in the ordinary course of business. For example, if the debtor's utility bill comes to an amount on March 15th and the debtor pays that bill, Contemporaneous? Yeah, transaction. The water heater uh, company bill was not in. Antecedent? Debt? To, uh, it was a new transaction. So the water heater company's bill was not an antecedent debt. Uh, it was a new transaction. However, as Gustin, I agree that in Chapter 31, a contemporaneous security interest created in the ordinary course of business is not a what? Not a what? Avoidable what? Preference. R read the example, please, sir, for us. Uh, for example, if a debtor had to order inventory. Remember that inventory stuff? On um, March 15th, and her supplier required a security interest before shipping to me, that security interest is not avoidable preference, even if the debtor declares bankruptcy on April 15th. The reason for this protection is the debtor is not bankrupt at the time of this transaction, and perhaps having the new inventory can change Thank you. Notice what our textbook has done, right? Thanks again for reading that. Thank you all for reading. They're building on what? That one paragraph. Those couple of paragraphs, I mean. They're building on what? In this entire section we were reading. It's building on what? Our knowledge from what? The former chapters, right? Because now we're where? We're talking about bankruptcy, right? So somebody might have a security interest, right? They might have uh, uh, their, their financial statement. Uh, they might be secured, unsecured, uh, perfected, unperfected, etc. Right, all the things that we learned about, right? And 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 and, and um, 
who gets what, when, where, and all that kind of stuff. And so now, in bankruptcy, they're using everything we talked about already and building to a point where, boom, you understand what's going on because you've already studied the other information. Very important, as we turn the page. Proof of claim. Proof of claim. Here we're talking about what? Bankruptcy law regulates the evaluation of creditors' claims and what else? And the order of what? Oh, distribution. What's that mean? Hmm? Bankruptcy law regulates the evaluation of creditors' claims and the order of distribution of the debtor's assets and payment of these claims. After the debtor has filled, uh, uh, has filed a what? A list of creditors, which you have to do, right? The court does what? Sends a notice of bankruptcy to what? Those on the list, yes. To be in entitled to payment from the proceeds liquidation of the debtor's estate, creditors must what? File proof of what? Claim. What's a claim, Mr. Charles? What's a claim? A claim is what? And a proof of claim is what? Mr. Joseph? Oh, and what else about that, Mustafa? Signed by what? Or an authorized representative with the amount of the claim against the debtor and the basis for it. A proof of the claim must ordinarily be filed within how many days? 90, 90 days after what? The first meeting of creditors? A creditors most, uh, must file what? Within the same, within that time, even though the trustee in bankruptcy is aware of the existence of the creditor's claim. Now, what is priority of claims? What are we talking about here? Priority. CPA examination. 32-3G. What is that? Somebody nice and loud. We're going to take turns reading this. Somebody read that. I'll read the first one. The distribution of the debtor's estate by the trustee is simple and yet complex. The distributors are, are, uh, are done according to a statutory list of priorities. The following list of priorities also uh, walks through examples to illustrate how the complexity of distribution work. Somebody read number one for me, please. Just number one. Secure creditors are paid to the extent of the value of their collateral. For example, creditor A is the equivalent uh, secure creditor is owed twenty-five thousand dollars. The equipment is sold for eighty thousand dollars. The creditor A receives the twenty-five thousand dollars and the remaining five thousand dollars drop down to satisfy debts to the next level of creditors. How if however the sale of the collateral will be six thousand dollars, creditor A receives the amount of money and then drops down the for the general creditor category to collect if there are funds remaining at the point, the remaining amount of the debt. Thank you. Now, what in the world do they mean by collateral? What's collateral? What could it be? House, car. House, car. I think I use a lot the what, the diamond ring, right? Yeah. Example, right? Any and, of your possessions. Oh, uh-huh. Any of your possessions. Okay, yes, right? And so, or, or it could be what, uh, remember we talked about field warehousing? Right? You might own those 50,000 um, iPads somewhere out there in California, right? So what happened with this one, Mr. Mustafa? Creditor A what? Uh, An equipment oh. secured creditor is owed how much? 75,000. And the equipment is sold for how much? For 80,000. And creditor A receives what? 75,000. What about the remaining 5,000? Throws down. Okay, now they have that word, if, however. If, then conjunct the adverb, uh, subordinating conjunction, if, and then conjunct the adverb, however. If, comma, however, comma, the sale of collateral brings only 60000 What happens then? What if the sale only brings 60000 What do you do? Creditor A receives that amount and then drops down to the general creditor category to collect the funds remaining at that point, the remaining amount. Oh, so thank you. So there is a system, there's a process. Remember, we are a nation of laws, right? Procedures, protocol, due process, right? We're not out here in a wild, wild rest, West, acting crazy and all kinds of stuff. No, we have an order, a function, a protocol. And so this is part of that. Someone want to read number two, please? Allow claims for what? Allow claims for debts to a spouse. Former spouse, child that were obligations at the time 
Okay, good. Number three. Okay, thank you. What, what, what's that mean? That third one. Who's getting their money? Um, Accountants. Accountants. Attorneys. Attorneys, right. Again, thank you for reading that. They're getting their money, right? Uh, top of page 675. Mr. Joe, read it for me, please. I think it says, if at the point, if at this point. Um, if at this point, and it would not be any Yeah, yeah. pro rata oh. distribution to three creditors in this category. Trustee, what? Trustee, ten thousand dollars mm. times five thousand dollars is ninety-five thousand dollars. The total amount of each uh, due to to each creditor at this level is the denominator, and the numerator mm -hmm. is each creditor's percentage. Mm -hmm. The trustee receives half of the five thousand dollars, or twenty-five hundred. And the attorney and the accountant will split 25 Okay, thank you, right? Number four, claims arising in the ordinary course uh, of a debtor's business or financial affair after filing, but before what? Before what? The order of relief, involuntary petition by creditors. This priority allows debtors who are in involuntary petition bankruptcy court to continue operating business opening because vendors have priority should the bankruptcy petition be granted uh claims for wages salaries commissions including vacation severance or sick leave pay uh it earned within 180 days before filing limited thirty thousand and fifty dollars for each person that was number five number six claims rising for distribution to employee benefit plans based on services rendered within 180 days before the filing maximum uh, maximum amount is what thirty thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Payment of uh, key employees retention plans (KERPSs) are permitted under the plans. Are essential to keeping the key employee at the company that is in bankruptcy. Proving that they are essential requires the 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 key employee to have a bona fide offer of employment from another company. What's number six? I'm sorry, what's number seven? Foreign producers up to $6,725 and producers against debtors who operate gain storage or grain storage facilities or fish storage facilities up to $6,725 per day. Next one, please. Claims by consumer creditors do not, not to exceed $3,025 for the purchase of consumer goods or services. That is for example, double bridal chain declared bankruptcy in 2018 to 2020, uh, in the 2018-2020 period, and that is the type of business that only works with deposits. In many cases, the bride to be were able to recoup their deposits, or if their dresses were close enough to completion, uh, to be given the dresses, the dresses themselves. But keep going, please. Uh, number nine. Certain taxes and penalties govern, govern or do government. Such an income and property tax, such as income and property taxes, these are time limits. For example, three years is a general time limit with exception, except, exceptions brought. Number 10, all other unsecured creditors. Number 11, court claims for death or personal injury resulting from operation of a vehicle or vessel while intoxicated from alcohol. 12 is remainder, if any, to debtor. Thank you. Taking an example down through the list helps with understanding distribution of a bankruptcy estate. Someone read that for me, please. Suppose that a debtor has what? Declared bankruptcy and that the trustee is making distributions. First bank holds a mortgage on the debtor's office building. 
The mortgage amount is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. The building is sold for what? Seven hundred thousand. First bank is what? Entitled to the what? Seven hundred thousand. Yeah, seven hundred thousand dollars from the sale. For the remaining portion of the debt, First Bank drops down in priority to wait with the other unsecured creditors. Ooh, unsecured. Remember that word for? Words for its remaining fifty thousand. There are ten thousand in administrative expenses. One employee who stayed with the debtor until the bankruptcy is, uh, is old, $60,650 in wages. The debtor did not have any pension or benefit plans. The debtor had a consumer deposit of uh, $1,750. The debtor owed property taxes of $11,700 for the past six months. There are the following, uh, there are the following creditors remaining $5,000 for utilities, $5,000 for landscape and services, Ten thousand for attorney fees on contract litigation and five thousand for IT services. The distribution will look like what? Like this, on page um, six uh, seven six, right? And so you can see it there. Let me put it over here so you all can see it, right? If you take a look at that on your own. Thirty-two dash four. Some read for me debtors, duties, and exemptions. What's that all about? Nice and loud. 32 4. Bankruptcy law imposes certain duties on debtor and provides for specific exemption of some of the debtor's estate from claims of delinquent creditors. What's that mean? Thank you for reading that, sir. Thank you. What's that mean? Huh? My wonderful people, what's that mean? Um, debtor's what? Certain what? Duties. Uh, oh, certain duties? What kind of duties are they talking about? Hmm? Read it one more time for us, please. Bankruptcy law imposes certain duties on the debtor and provides for certain exemptions from a sum of the debtor's estate from the claim. So it imposes certain types of duties on the debtor, right? Imposes them, right? What's, what's after that, sir? Keep going, please. Oh, so there are some type of uh, 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 exemptions that are present, right? Uh, want to read the next section, please, sir? Uh, debtor must file with the court a list of creditors, a schedule of assets. Whoa, 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 debtors. hold it. They're talking about the list of creditors again? Huh? Why is that important, Mustafa? Why is that important? Hmm? Bankruptcy law imposes certain duties on the debtor and provides for specific exemptions of some of the debtor's estate from the claims of the creditor. A debtor must file with the court a list of creditors, a schedule of assets and liabilities, and the statement of her financial affairs. What's that mean, Mr. Mustafa? A list of creditors? Why do we have a list of creditors? And the answer is, sir, because that's who's getting their what? Yeah, <laughs> get it right. So, right. All right. So, so, uh, so we, we have to have, get that. And it says what? What's the other thing it said? Uh, a schedule of assets and liabilities. What's that, Mr. Joseph? Assets and liability? What, what are you talking about? Just so they know what you have. Oh, yeah. And then a statement of, of the financial affairs? And then it must also appear for examination under oath at the first meeting of creditors. What do they mean by under oath? Why is that important? Under oath. So they tell the what? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Now, 32-4B, debtor's exemptions, CPA examination. A debtor is permitted to claim certain property, property of the estate and trustee's possession and keep it free from claims of creditors. What's that mean? Free from claims of creditors. Oh, they can't take. Can you keep keep reading, please? Sorry. Exemptions. Exemptions are provided under federal law, but state laws also provide for exemptions. Examples of exempt property from the federal code include water rates, bureau, burial, burial plots, mm -hmm. property used to earn a living, uh, one VCR or DVD player, and one car. 
Jason's a VCR player. Well, you know. <laughs> I guess they want everything, right? <laughs> um, your receptions include all stoves in the home, one sewing machine, one cell phone, the family Bible, a pew in the public house of worship, enough food for 60 days, a wedding ring, one car, not exceeding $1,000 in value, and a watch not exceeding $35 in value. California exempts tools of the trade, orthopedic devices, and tools maintaining for debtors' residents. Thank you. The principal exemptions provided by the Big Property Co. are the debtors' what? Interest in what? Real or personal, Real or personal property used as a residence called a what? Homestead home exemption, right? And then it talks about what? I want to keep on going. The homestead exemption on page uh, 677, please. The homestead exemption is now greatly limited and in effect preempts, uh, preempts state law on the debtor's exemption. Mm. Debtors are required to have lived in the home for two years, 730 days prior to the bankruptcy, and the amount of the homestead exemption will be limited to $170,000. Or one hundred seventy three hundred fifty dollars to be able to use a higher state homestead exemption. The debtor must have lived in the home for one thousand two hundred fifteen days or forty months. Thank you. Why? Thank you for reading that. Why? Why do they have to have lived in that house for forty days? What are they trying to say here? <laughs> 40, 40 months. I mean 40, 40, 41 day, 40, 40 days, forty months, right? 40, I'm sorry, 40 months. 40 months. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. 40 months. Why are they trying to say 40 months? Huh? Because they want to make sure like, they can like, still stay in the house. You know I mean? They don't want somebody just moving in someplace, yeah. right? This huge mansion, whatever it might be, right? Say, look, it's my house. Oh, you just moved in there last month, right? You're going bankrupt. You're bankrupt, you know, whatever like that. So here's so no, we want 40 months that they've lived there, right? Uh, then it says that what um, labeled as the most flagrant abuse of the existing bankruptcy system, debtors have used the homestead exemption to shift their assets into expensive homes to shield everyone from bankruptcy, known as the what yeah. mansion loophole. The change in the Reform Act rela uh, r r related to the homestead exemption were among the most uh, the debated and the most dramatic. So read the example for me, please about WorldCom and everything else too. Prior to the reform, the late Burt Reynolds. The great bankruptcy in Florida was relieved of millions in debt, but he was able to keep his 2.5 million um, Valhalla estate there. Corporate writer Paul Lizarian, Lizarian uh -huh. who was convicted of security fraud, also appeared bankruptcy in Florida, but kept his mansion. The large home in Hillsborough County, Florida, former WorldCom CFO Scott Sullivan, who entered a guilty plea to fraud and other charges, and served four years of a five year sentence, built a multi million dollar home in Florida to gain homestead protections. Lindy Graham, who sat on E Ron's board, purchased 200 acres of land in Texas and constructed a large home with her husband. Former Senator Bill Graham to take advantage of the homestead ex exemptions and then be able to affect it. Oh, thank you. Hold it. You mean we have some people taking advantage of this? Why? Because they can. Huh? Because they can. They can, but why? So they, so they don't lose money. And what, it, what, what, what's one of, the, one of the most important things anyone needs? A home, a ho well, a house is not a home, is it? okay. Well, uh, you, need, you need a home, right? Uh, but they, they have to have their house, right? And so here they're saying, hey, uh, despite the bankruptcy, they're, they're gonna have their, their house, right? Um, other exemptions include what? Payments under what? Life insurance, and thank you again for reading that, sir, thank you. Life insurance, alimony, and child support payments and awards from personal injury litigation 
College savings accounts and the IRAs are exempt property under the federal exemptions and can be used even by those, what, debtors who are, what, using state exemptions. The IRA exemption is limited to, what, $1,362,800. Some debtors have been, what, engaged in what is called exemption planning? What's that? What's exemption planning? By which they take their assets and shuffle them in order to place as much as possible into exempt property? Some states are now making determination as to whether exemption planning amount to what? Yeah, what do you think? My one little people, what do you think? I mean, I would say, huh? say They just try to do what? They're just trying to save what they can. They're trying to save what they can, right? Yeah. And take it away from the creditors, right? Because yeah. they know they're about to go bankrupt, huh? Um, debtors protection against discrimination. Discrimination? This, what's that mean? So read that for me, please. 32-4C on page uh, 678. Discrimination? against anyone on the basis of a discharge in bankruptcy. For example, a state, a state cannot refuse to issue a new license to an individual if the license fees, fees on a previous one have now been, have been discharged as a debt in an individual's declaration of bankruptcy. Thank you. What are they talking about? What are you talking about here? Federal law says what? You can't what? Discriminate. Can't discriminate. Against a person who what? Has gone what? Bankrupt, right? We want to give that person a brand new chance, you know, move forward. In fact, they have to take what? What do we learn in our textbook? They have to take what? What kind of counseling? Financial what? Financial counseling? Why? Yeah, they, you know, Why? They don't repeat their mistakes. Yes, right? Um, we want people to become economically, independently, um, financially stable, right? And so we don't want to discriminate. We want to give them a second uh, opportunity. That's the next thing I usually talk about. Um, discharge in bankruptcy? 32-5. What is a discharge in bankruptcy? What is that? It says here that what? That, that the main objectives of a bankruptcy uh, proceeding are to collect and distribute the debtor's assets. And then what? What's that mean? Forgive them, right? The decree terminating the bankruptcy proceeding is generally a what? Discharge that releases a debtor from more, most debts. Under federal law, a discharge is available only once every what? Eight years. Eight years. Now, is there something called a denial of discharge? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is that? 32-5A. Someone want to read it for us, please? The nice, court, love. The court will refuse to grant a discharge if the debtor has one within one year of filing a petition fraudulently transfer transferred or concealed property with intent to hinder, delay, or defraud creditors. Mm. Two, failed to keep proper financial records. Three, made a false oath or account. Four, failed to explain satisfactory failed to explain satisfactory any loss of assets. Five, refused to obey any lawful order of the court or refused to testify after having been granted immunity. Six, obtained a discharge within the last eight years. Seven, filed a written waiver of discharge that is approved by the court. Or eight, in the case of the consumer debtor has failed to complete a personal financial management instructional course. Ah, oh, okay, so here, uh, they're talking about, thank you for reading that, sir. They're talking about what? What's the essence? The qualifications and if you do not meet the qualifications, you'll be denied discharge. Yeah, you have to meet all of these uh, requirements, right? Number eight, in case of a consumer debtor has failed to what, uh, to complete a financial, a personal financial management and structural course, right? I mentioned that earlier, right? You have to take that course, and you all said why? To help, that let's help people become financially stable. What does a discharge do? 
A discharge releases the debtor from what? Most the debtor. unpaid balance of most what? Debts except for what? Taxes, custom duties, child support obligations, and tax penalties. Student loan obligations are not discharged in bankruptcy unless the loan first became due more than seven years before the bankruptcy or unless not allowing a discharge would impose undue hardship on the debtor. All right, turn the page. 680. In addition, the following debts are not discharged by bankruptcy. One, loans obtained by use of a false financial statement made with intent to deceive and on which the creditor reasonably relied. Two, debts, uh, debts not scheduled or listed with court in time for allowances. Three, debts arising from fraud while debtor was acting in a fiduciary capacity or by reason of embezzlement or larceny. Four, alimony and child support. Five, a judgment for what? Willful and malicious injury. Six, consumer debt to a single creditor totaling more than what? $725 for luxury goods and services within 90 days of the order of relief and cash advantage exceeding 1000 based on a consumer open-end credit, such a credit card within the 70 days of the order of relief. Seven, damages arising from what drunk driving or the operation of vehicles or aircraft by people who are, who are uh, enumerated. Eight, loans used to pay taxes, including credit cards. Nine, taxes not paid as a result of fraudulent return, although other unpaid taxes beyond the past three years can be discharged. Ten, pre-bankruptcy fees and assessments uh, owed to homeowner associations. Eleven, debts owed to uh, tax-qualified retirement plans. For example, one of the financial concerns facing athlete Lance Armstrong is that litigation against him may include finding a malicious uh, fi I'm sorry, finding a malice, remember I don't have my glasses, finding a malice with the result for, uh, being that those judgments cannot be discharged in bankruptcy, thus making all those judgments a lifetime obligation. Figure 32-3 has a listing of non-dischargeable debts. We're on page 681, that reading. What is reorganization under chapter 11? What are these reorganization plans under Chapter 11? 32-6. Nice and loud, please, sir. Read it for me. Nice and loud. In addition to liquidation under Chapter 7, the bankruptcy code permits debtors to restructure the organization and finances of their businesses so that they may continue to operate. In these rehabilitation plans, the debtor keeps all of the assets, exempt and non-exempt, continues to operate the business, and makes a settlement that is acceptable to the majority of the creditors. This settlement is binding on the minority creditors. Individuals, partnerships, and corporations and businesses may all be recognized under the bankruptcy code. The first step is to file a plan of the debtor's recognition. This plan may be filed by the debtor, any party of interest, or a committee of creditors. If the debtor wishes to move from a Chapter 11 proceeding, in the case of an individual debtor, the debtor must survive the means test that is now a requirement for determining eligibility for bankruptcy. Hmm. So, thank you. So, reorganization does what? Hmm? Reorganization does... Why do we have reorganization? Restructure, the, we talked about this before, right? And refinance their what? Their business? So that what? They can keep on operating. Why do they want? Why do you want them to keep on operating? Thanks again for reading that. Why? So maybe they can bounce maybe back, right? Yeah, or they can just catch up to more of the more of the new guys. Mm hmm What are the contents of this plan? Thirty dash six a. The plan divide uh, divides ownership, interests, and debts into those that will be affected by what. The adoption of the plan and those that will not be. It then specifies what will be done to those interests and claims that are affected. For example, when a mortgage payments are too high for the income of a corporation, a possible plan would be to reduce the mortgage payments and give the mortgage holder what? Preferred stock what? To compensate them for what? For the loss sustained, right? Um, top of page uh, uh, 
uh, was that 682? All creditors, shareholders, and other interest holders within a particular class must be treated what? The same way. That's right, the same way. For example, the holders of a first mortgage bond must all be treated similarly. The treatment of the bondholders in the Chrysler and GM bankruptcies was a point of contention and negotiation in those reorganizations. A plan can also provide for what? Assumption. The assumption, uh, rejection, or assignment of executory contracts. The trustee or debtor can undertake, uh, can under, uh, I'm sorry, the trustee or debtor can, under certain circumstances, suspend performance of a contract uh, not yet fully performed. Example, collecting bargaining agreements may be rejected, uh, collective bargaining agreements may be rejected uh, with approval of the bankruptcy court. Confirmation of plan? 30-6B, after the plan is prepared, the court must approve or confirm it. A plan will be confirmed if it has been submitted in good faith and if its positions are reasonable. After the plan is confirmed, the owner and creditors of the enterprise have only the rights that are specified in what? In the what? The plan. Yes, that's right, in the plan. Now, CPA exam 32-7. Um, payment plans under Chapter 13. The bankruptcy code also provides for the adoption of extended time payments plans for individual debtors who have regular income. These debtors must owe unsecured debts of less than $419,275 and secured debts of less than $1,257,850. An individual debtor who has a regular income may submit a plan for the installment payment of outstanding debts. If the court approves it, the debtor may then pay the debts in the installment specified by the plan, even if the creditor, uh, creditors have not originally agreed to such installment payments. Um, so an individual debtor who has a regular income may submit a plan for the inst in 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 installment payment of outstanding debts. If the court approves it, the debtor may then pay the debts to the installment specified by the plan, even if the creditors had not originally agreed to such installment payments. Um, content of the plan, 32-7A, still without my glasses, the individual debtor plan is, in effect, a budget of the debtor's future income and what? With respect to outstanding debts. The plan must do what? Provide for the eventual payment in full of what? All claims entitled to priority under the bankruptcy code. All creditors holding the same kind or class of claim must be treated what? The same way. 32-7B. Confirmation of plan. We're on page uh, uh, 682. The plan has no effect until the court approves or what? Confirms, Confirms it. A plan will be confirmed if what? It was submitted in good faith and is what? The best interest of the creditors. Has to be in the best interest of the creditors. When the plan is confirmed, debts are payable as outlined how? In the plan. Again, they're saying over and over again, the plan is very, very important, right? And then discharge of the debtor uh, here after all the payments called for by the plan have been made. The debtor is giving a what? A discharge, discharge releases the debtor from liability for all debts except those that would uh, not be discharged by an ordinary bankruptcy discharge. Under the bankruptcy reform, the court cannot grant a discharge until the debtor has completed an instructional course concerning what? Here it comes again. Personal financial management, right? If the debtor does not perform under the plan, the creditor can move to transfer the debtor's case to a Chapter 7 proceeding, but where the means test would apply. Interesting. Fascinating. Uh, I need some volunteers to read for me. The summary on page 883, starting with, uh, I'll start the first paragraph. Jurisdiction over bankruptcy cases is in U.S. district courts which may refer all cases and related proceedings to adjunct bankruptcy courts. 
Oh, I want to take the next paragraph, please. Three of the five. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Three of the five bankruptcy proceedings are discussed in this chapter. Liquidation, chapter seven. Reorganization, chapter eleven. And the excessive time payment, chapter thirteen. A liquidation proceeding bankruptcy under chapter seven may be either voluntary or involuntary. That bankruptcy nine and twelve are specialized um, and not covered. In this chapter. The voluntary case is commenced by a uh, debtor's filing of by the debtor's filing of a, dis, a petition of like a bankruptcy court. A voluntary petition is subject to the means test to determine to determine if the debtor's means meets the requirements for declaring bankruptcy. A voluntary case is commenced by the creditor filing a petition with the bankruptcy court. If there are twelve or more creditors at these three of those unsecured claims total $16,750 or more must sign the involuntary petition. If there are fewer than 12 creditors, uh, any creditor whose unsecured claims is at least $16,750 can sign the petition. If the debtors consist of if the debtors consist of bankruptcy position, it must be shown that the debtor is not paying debts as they become due. Eligibility for chapter seven and 11 bankruptcy to exclude railroads, um, municipalities, and small business administration companies. Individual debtors are restricted on chapter seven and 11 filings by their ability to repay. If found to have the means to pay, they go into a chapter 13 proceeding. Chapter 13 eligibility is a limited Limited to consumers with $419,275 in unsecured debt and $1,257,850 in unsecured debt. An automatic stay prevents the creditor from taking legal action against against the debtor after a bankruptcy petition is filed. The trustee in bankruptcy is selected to uh, selected by the creditor and is a success, successor to and acquires the rights of the debtor. And in certain cases, the trustee can avoid transfers of property to prevent creditors from satisfying their claims. Pre preferential transfers may be set aside. A transfer for a precedent for a present consideration, such as cash sale, is not a preference that it, it's not a preference. Bankruptcy laws regulate the ways that regulate the way creditors present their claims and how the assets of the debtor are to be distributed in payment of the claim. Some assets of the debtor are exempt from the bankruptcy estate, such as a portion of the value of the debtor's own. Secured claims are not affected by the debtor's bankruptcy. Following the secured claims are the unsecured claims paid in the following order. Number one, thank you for reading that, sir. Support or maintenance for a spouse, former spouse, or child. Number two, costs and expenses of administration of the bankruptcy case. Number three, claims arising in the ordinary course of a debtor's business or financial affairs after filing, but before what? Before order of relief involuntary. Four, claims for wages, salaries, and commissions, including vacation, severance or sick leave pay earned within 180 days before the filing of the petition limited to $13,650 for each person. Five, claims arising for contributions to employee benefit plans based on services rendered within 180 days before the filing. The max amount is $13,650. Six, Farm production producers up to six thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars, and fishers against grain storage facilities or fish storage up to six thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars. Seven claims by consumer creditors not to exceed three thousand twenty-five dollars. That is uh, deposits. Eight certain taxes and penalties due government. Units, such as income and property taxes. Nine, all other unsecured creditors. Ten, remainders, if any, to debtor. 
The decree terminating bankruptcy proceedings is generally a discharge that releases a debtor from most debts. Certain debts, such as income taxes, student loans, loans obtained by use of a false financial statement, alimony, and debts not listed by the debtor are not discharged. Under Chapter 11, bankruptcy, individuals, partnerships, and corporations uh, in business may be reorganized so that the business can continue to operate. A plan for reorganization must be approved by the court. Under a Chapter 13 bankruptcy proceeding, individual debtors with a regular income may adopt extended time payment plans for the payment of debts. A plan for extended time payment must also be confirmed by the court. Federal, state, and local law may not discriminate against anyone on the basis of a discharge in bankruptcy. That concludes Chapter 32. Are there any questions, Mona people? Thank you so much for all of your assistance. Thank you.